Hi, everybody. It's Dan O'Connor, and we are going to be doing another live episode starting right now. So get ready. Today, we're going to be talking about, I'm going to start out talking about communication tactics, power phrases, freestyle scripts, and other strategies for executives. I have a new course coming out, and I'm just starting it now, so I'm a little bit unknowledgeable when it comes to that course. <laughs> so I don't, have the, I don't have all of the info, but send me an email if you're interested in signing up for it. It is uh, communication skills for executives and managers who would like their executives to communicate more effectively. So today we're going to start out answering some questions from last week that I unfortunately did not, or last time, that I did not have time to answer. And let's start out with, oh, by the way, we are being assisted today again by the lovely and talented Joktan. Say hello to the invisible joke, Tan. <laughs> and today's first question is going to be, ¿Me mandaste algunos? Okay. The first question is going to be, what do you say at work when somebody makes fun of your sexuality or asks you a question, uh, asks you about your sexuality? That has never happened to me because everybody just assumes that I'm like the manliest person ever. But after having reflected on that for a while, what I generally say is something along the lines of, what I generally say, see, I'm going to back up for a second as I normally do. Normally when people, normally, when people either make a joke about it or ask you about it, by the way, the right way to ask someone if, uh, if, if they are gay or, or not is number one outside of the workplace because that has no relevance to anything that you would ever do at work unless you work in maybe a, uh, an environment that is pro-gay rights or something. But the right way to do it is, if you're going to, is to is flat out ask somebody something along the lines of, say, don't tell them that you have somebody that you think would be perfect for them because the other person is gay too. So therefore they would be perfect for your gay friend. Uh, it, would be, it would be something such as, uh, maybe it comes up naturally in a conversation. And if it did, and you were talking about your past or something, uh, so you wanted to share information in a natural way. I suggest saying something such as, by the way, I am 100% straight. Are you? Or what is your preference if you're comfortable sharing that? And always follow it with, or preface it with, if you're comfortable sharing this, uh, what's your preference? Or if you're not comfortable sharing this, and do it just as though it's nothing, because it really is nothing, to especially the new generation that's coming up. So to preface the answer that I would give, uh, I would keep in mind that if it's a young person or if it's somebody who's you're friendly with, generally people don't really know how to really broach the subject and they might not say the right thing, but they might be trying to communicate with you on a more intimate level for the right reasons. And so don't take it to heart unless it's obvious that they are doing it to somehow hurt you or offend you. If they are somehow trying to, you know, and no matter what the reason is, if I'm a professional and want to keep my communication skills on a certain level so that I can then hold people to task, I have to be consistent with that. So if you are my friend or are not my friend, especially if you're my friend, actually, I would want to inform you if you were to ask me something like that at work, something along the lines of, for your sake, I'm not going to answer that because me answering that question or you asking it could get you into trouble. And I don't want any more trouble for you. <laughs> I say more because generally people who would ask something like that, would have a past with trouble. <laughs> so that's one way to, to answer it. If you believe that they're not doing it with, you know, with bad intentions, I would gently let them know, I'm not going to answer that during work, or I'm not going to go there because I don't want you to get into trouble. I wouldn't get any, into any trouble answering it. And I certainly have no shame about my personal life. However, this is an inappropriate venue. And to save you any unneeded trouble, I'm not going to answer that. And just be very clear and direct and frank with it. Now, if it is somebody who's making a joke to try and embarrass you or to try to make you feel uncomfortable, I would tell them right in front of everybody. I would first look at everybody and say something such as, all right, Mark, you think that's funny? You know, putting other people on the spot so that they will then say to him later on, what are you doing? You know, don't get me into trouble, but say something like, you think that's funny, Mark? You think that's funny? Joe, I'm surprised that you would make those types of jokes that would put your job 
in jeopardy like that. I think it's not only just in bad taste and bad form. I think it's, I, excuse me, I'm surprised that it would come from you. I wouldn't ever address it unless, I just wouldn't address it at all at work, period. Uh, because things like that, you know, I, why would I be asking, like if, if, if I were working with my good friend, I would not be talking about his sex life or his intimate life at work. There's no place for that. So you want to keep the conversations at work 100% professional so that you can always call other people on it when they are not. That's really the answer. And if you feel like, let's say you're at lunch and you're with a friend and you're not really at work, but you just don't feel like answering that. You can also say, you know, I frequently when I'm put on the spot and I feel uncomfortable and I do not know how to respond to something, I'll reach for a duct tape spotlight question. Remember that those always begin with, are you trying to? If you feel uncomfortable, are you trying to make me uncomfortable by asking me a question like that? You're in front of all of these people. Just narrate the scene. You know what I mean? When you narrate the scene, it takes the pressure off of you because you don't have to think of anything. You're just explaining what's going on. Are you trying to hurt my feelings by bringing up something in my past that was embarrassing to me? Is another example of a spotlight question. Are you trying to take the pressure off of you by throwing those types of insults at me? Are you trying to embarrass me or make me feel uncomfortable by asking me a question about my sexuality here with my coworkers? That's not appropriate and I'm uncomfortable answering questions like that. All you're doing is narrating. What's going on here? You say it, simple. And I was just talking about this, something like this with someone else, Diana. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of the same. Remember that the same skills that you can use in a public arena, if you are giving a public uh, speech, you know, if you're a public speaker, frequently we, as public speakers, we get asked questions that put us on the spot, maybe make us feel uncomfortable, maybe are insulting to us. We feel at the moment. Number one tip is, please remember I said this, if you are ever called out by a participant or a, uh, a guest at, well, while you're delivering a public speech, 99% of the time you will find that that person who you believe at the, in the moment is making you uncomfortable by putting you on the spot and challenging you and you think they're being rude and you think that they're not liking what you're saying, that is almost never the case. They are almost always on your side and not aware that they're making you uncomfortable because they're asking questions that are challenging because they are so into what you are saying. So keep that in mind. Uh, and when you're in a group setting of, of maybe two people, one person, or a thousand people, don't defend yourself when you are put on the spot or asked rude questions. Don't argue with people, be as frank and direct as you possibly can, especially if it's about your feelings and you're feeling uncomfortable, but don't try to justify or defend when we are simply honest with our responses and how people make us feel, then, then people respect us more and if we defend anything, remember the principle, we only defend things that we believe are vulnerable. And so people, whether they realize it on a conscious level or not, when we start to defend ourselves or our choices or our lifestyle or our history or our right to be someplace, our qualifications, when we start to do that, people automatically start to disqualify us and believe that there might be something that we are hiding and maybe something that the other person who called us out is right about because or else we wouldn't be defending ourselves. When, for example, if somebody were to ask me uh, in a public setting, if I were doing a question and answer session after a conference, something such as, you know, say, Dan, remember when you did X, Y, Z and you, you know, really messed up that conference back in Chicago and everybody got really mad at you there. Um, <laughs> I don't even know how I was going to end it. But if somebody said something insulting, what are your, Dan, when I was doing hypnosis seminars, <laughs> people used to ask me, I think it happened twice, <laughs> by the way, what are your qualifications to be doing this? You know, when I was hypnotizing groups of thousands of people at a time, and I remember I had to say something such as, I'm surprised that you would try to embarrass me like that in front of all of these people. Next question, and then I, would, then I would just go right ahead because I'm not about to justify myself in front of you because any word that I would say, you know, about how, what qualifications are you looking for? You know, I'll tell you if I have them. Or, you know, I have my this, I have my that, I have my this. Any way that I would try to justify my place there, 
would be seen as I'm defending something that is vulnerable in my past. But instead, if you just look at somebody and say something such as, I'm surprised you would try to embarrass me like that in front of all of these people. I'd be happy to answer that later on. And then you move right along. People are like, oh, doesn't even feel like explaining himself. Okay, stalker, stalker. <laughs> you, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's your name or if that's it. Stalker, humoid. How to avoid them looking for payback if they feel slighted. I'm not sure that I understand the question. Uh, the question is, did you understand, Joktan? To uh, uh, and this <laughs> okay. Stalker. Stalker is the name of the is the name of the. Uh, okay. Sorry. Humanoid. Oh, stalker humanoid is your name. I apologize. <laughs> How to avoid them looking for payback if they feel slighted. Oh, that's the thing. I I think you might be saying. If I slight somebody or if I, let's say, win the battle at the, that's one of the reasons we don't want to engage in battles. We want to illuminate the battlefield. We want to change the game. If somebody's insulting us, you know, in a public forum, I don't want to insult you back and win that game so that I can, first of all, win the blue ribbon for the ugliest communicator there at the table, you know, or win the prize of the most unenlightened communicator out of work. I don't want to win that blue ribbon. And furthermore, if somebody has already shown that that is their pattern, they're going to be more skilled than I am. And I'll, that's okay, I will give them that. If you are a more skilled, insulting communicator, if you are a more skilled negaholic, if you're more skilled at being a sniper, at, at passive aggressive communication than I am, that is okay. I'll let you have that. I don't wanna do battle with you. It's, you know, In your arena, on your turf, I don't wanna do that. So instead of, slighting them. Remember what, <laughs> I mean, sometimes people might feel a little bit slighted, but I do not have a problem with people wanting to get revenge because I, when I'm in my right mind, which I'm not always in, try to shine light on this situation, which is why I try to always come back when I'm thinking clearly to just straightforward, direct communication. But that's not easy in the moment. That's why you have to have things like spotlight question, lead in lines ready. Are you trying to, when you say this, are you trying to say that? Those two lead in lines are some of my favorites when I'm just answering a, an insulting question that I know to be insulting and that, you know, I, I, I need to answer right then and there. Why would you try to embarrass me like that with a question in front of all of these people? You know, when you say, when you ask me about my sexuality, are you trying to say that you already believe you know what it is and you're making a judgment? Is that what you're saying? You know, if, and if that is what you're saying, you know, if somebody were to say, yeah, it is. Well, if that's what you're saying, you can come right out and say that. I can take it. So the next time you have something like that to say, just go ahead and say it. It's okay. I'm a big boy. You know, and then I'm letting you know, just be upfront with me because there's nothing that is upfront, honest communication that I can't handle. And I'm sure you could not handle as well. You know, we can always handle that. So when we let people know, just behave like that and it'll be okay. Don't be scared. Ask me what you have to say. Now, I don't want to say it like that, but some people may take it like that. I don't really have a problem with it. As long as you're not trying to hoist them on their own petard. Nicole H. Hello, Dan. What can we say if we people at, see people at work clear? Oh, I need to wear my glasses. If we see people at work clearly gossiping or backstabbing about us. Okay. Nicole H. What I recommend in those situations is this, I'm all about finding the quick at work in these types of situations. This is not a, if this is going on at work, somebody's gossiping or backstabbing about me, I have to remember to do my cost benefit analysis, remember, go back to my personal compass. Those two tools, by the way, you can get for free on my website. So I mean, you can get the template so that you can create them. You have to create your own. But when those types of situations come up, I must remember people on my <laughs> list, of one to 10, I have to know where you are. Are you a one, which means I'm not going to waste any of the time that I have invested and the money that I have invested in the words that are in my head. You know, I've invested creating those, so are you. I'm not gonna waste those on anybody who wants to take some for free. You know, anybody who's just trying to get my goat. You know, you're not getting my goat. I, I'm, I'm gonna practice goat hiding when you're a one. You contribute nothing to my personal, professional, or spiritual development. And I should not be wasting my time. I should be focused and staying on my miss mission and my message. 
that said, if you are a 10, then I want to, if you bring something to my attention, even if you don't say it the right way, I want to address it. If somebody's gossiping or backstabbing about me, it's going to be really rare that you are anywhere above a five on that list. You are going to be a four or below because you're not going to be contributing at all to my personal, professional, or spiritual development, and then going up around the corner and gossiping with Susie or backstabbing me. It's not, it's not happening. That said, if I just wanted to stop, like the other week, somebody was saying that everybody at work was talking about how she's having an affair with her, with her, with her male friend at work. And she didn't want that to be a problem with her family or anything like that, but it's getting out of hand. And first of all, remember, you should not even know what people are saying about you. Now, I, I know that Heather, wait, Heather, right? Heather said, you actually heard this or saw this. So that's, you know, that, that's different. Now, if somebody comes up to me and said, do you know what they were saying about you? That's when you need to tell them, hey, you're the one I'm going to be angry with if you keep it up. And if you finish that sentence, you're the gossiper. And I don't like that. It wasn't meant for my ears. They didn't tell me. But if I'm seeing it or hearing it, what I want to do is take the shortest route to the objective. You know what I mean? I want, I want to take that straight line to if I really care you know what I'm, like heather i want to i want to just warn you these distractions are going to get worse and worse i mean in life you know if you if you conquer this one for what, what however you do it it's going to come up again and even worse because that's how life is you know so it's going to get worse and worse and worse these distractions that you should not worry yourself about anyone who matters at work your boss your supervisors they all know who you are how you work and any of that stuff that people are saying to one another, backstabbing and gossip, they know that you cannot defend yourself because anybody who knows you doesn't need you to defend them or doesn't need for you to defend yourself to them. Anybody who wants to engage in that, they don't care what you say. They're going to believe what they want and they don't matter. But if you just want to, if you just need to, for whatever reason, you just stop. The way I have found to be the most effective is to come up to that person and I want to give them an out because people like that do not have a lot of backbone and they don't really have, uh, you know, they're not, they don't sit on their morals. They're not deep people. They're very unlikely if you were to say, you know, a straightforward way, hey, Trixie, I just heard that you were talking about my relationship with another coworker. And when you do things like that, it puts my reputation and your reputation in jeopardy. Please stop doing that, and you and I will never have to talk about this again. Like, if, 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 if that might be appropriate for the person, I would use a simple desk script, which is what I just did. Hey, when you do this, here's the consequence. Please do this, and here's what you'll get out of it. That's D-E-S-C. -E. Hey, Trixie, I just heard you were talking about my relationship with that person. That tarnishes my and your reputation. Please stop talking about me, and that way you and I will never have to have this conversation again. Now, the reason I just left it really simple like that is because when people are confronted with their behavior who are like that, it is an impossibility that they would be comfortable with that type of communication. You know, and I'm not confronting you. I'm addressing the issue. I'm saying, here's what you did. Here's why that's wrong. Here's what I'd like. Here's what you'd get. When you do that, they, they're going to hate it so much. At the end, when you say, we will never have to talk about this again. Chances are they're going to be like, oh, God, please, let's not do this again, because this isn't what I'm used to. I'm not I was I was thinking that I was going to be able to, like, you know, say something nasty to your face because you were going to be uh, passive aggressive with me. So, excuse me, <laughs> something nice to your face and then do something nasty behind your back, because I was assuming that you would address me in a passive aggressive way. That's what I'm used to. And remember that that is what they're used to. You know, these people who do that, they don't know any better. They don't. And people will say, yes, they do. They do not. If they knew a way to get all of their needs met and fulfill their needs at work while being a good person, they would do that. Because once you do that and know that that's a way, there's no other way. They don't know that. So, you know, be forgiving and patient with her. And so if you have to address it, that's what I would do. D-E-S-C. -E. By the way, that tool you will find. Oh, in my upcoming course, the, the communication skills for executives. Uh, also, if you want to take this route, this, this, by the way, was the first route I would take, which is the quickest route to what normally is an end. I would be upfront and direct, but I would not call them out because when you call them out, sometimes people like that get defensive. They feel as though they're put in a corner and I don't ever want people ever, ever to feel desperate when they're around me because desperate people are dangerous people. And 
I want to watch out for myself, my safety, my career, and my life. I don't want any more trouble than I have. You know, if what your goal is, is to stop whatever's bothering you, generally the quickest way to do it is to not blame this person, but wait until, you know, an, an hour later, whatever, and come up to Trixie, let's say her name is, and say, same thing, D-E-S-E, but just use the passive voice. Trixie, I know that some things are being said about me around here that aren't true. And I think if you heard them, I'm not going to tell them to you. I think you would know that they're not true as well. And I don't need to know who's saying them, but if you hear them, do you think I can count on you to tell them just it's not true and that you don't want to talk about it? Because that way I can stop having to go around and investigate this and I can put an end to it before it really creates a problem for anybody else. Would that work for you? Could you do that for me, please? You know, I'm appealing to your better self because generally people live up to our expectations. And so if I tell you, I expect you because I know you to be a gossip and a backstabber and all of that and knock it off, chances are what they're going to go do is try and buttress their gossip with everybody that they've already said it to, you know, hey, if Dan says this to you, just so you know, I was telling the truth, you know what I mean? And they'll just keep it up or they'll go around and spread more stuff and make it even worse. If I really wanted to stop, I'm going to appeal to your higher self and say, hey, I don't need to know who's doing this, but if you hear it, could you tell them just that maybe because we're friends, could you tell them that I'm off limits? And, or maybe if we're not friends, just because I know that you're a professional, I know you value your job as I do. I know that you value your piece at work here as I do. Could you just tell them to knock it off? And can I count on you to tell them that it's not true because you and I both know it isn't? That would really help me out. So again, be direct, clear, nip it in the bud, quick, 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 quick. We don't want to spend too much time on this. And remember in your mind, don't think of it as, you yeah, don't spend as much time as I do explaining it. Don't think of it as confronting someone. You're not. You're addressing a situation that's very different. Okay. Pamela Macha. Hey, Pamela. What about people have to point out that they have more education or this or that than I at work? I want to add this. I want to add that. Oh, I stay in my lane and this is unnecessary. Good for you, Pamela. I like that mindset. That's good. Uh, so you, you try to stay focused and do your thing. And someone is pointing out to you that they have more time. See, that's what I was just talking about. You, you and I both know that if somebody is taking time out to tell you about what they have or what they've done in their experience, it's because they do not feel comfortable with their experience and they believe that you are a threat to them. And I'm not saying that like, oh, she's threatened by you. So <laughs> she's just jealous because sometimes people say that just as a, you know, a blanket excuse. But if somebody is taking the time to constantly justify their reason for being there or is they're trying to quantify their value with what they have, it's generally because those things they feel are vulnerable because we do not defend what we believe to be invulnerable or real. We only defend, especially with no prompting, things that we believe to be vulnerable, at risk, or false. Therefore, I would, number one, forgive her. Number two, be kind to her and understand that no matter what it is it's probably difficult for you because you're feeling as though it's directed towards you. You know, when she's saying, oh, you know, I have more experience than you, if that's what she's saying. But the truth of the matter is, all of us who are watching this, if we really felt like, I don't have to justify to anybody why I'm here. I'm the grand poobah. I built this company. I'm the most qualified person in the world. You know, whatever the case may be, why would I go, I'm the richest person. Why would I go around saying that to anybody? You know, if I have, everything that I need. I don't try and tell people that I have it. I would try to help other people get it because it feels so good. So uh, if you want her to just shut her big trap, which I can understand, you know, which is stop flapping your gums around me about what you have and why you're here. Then what you want to do is help her get unstuck. And the way that you do that is, this is the opposite of what most people do. Remember, most people get the opposite of the result they were looking for validate her. And when she says, you know, I'm so rich. I'm so this, gosh, you really have a beautiful home and a, you know, be what a beautiful car. You must've worked really hard for that. Or <laughs> you must've really married well, whatever the, whatever the reason is that she's saying, you know, or, you know, ask her about her past and, and, and validate that with her because 
maybe, <laughs> you know, it is the truth. People who are needy, people around them tend to shun them and say, I'm not going to need you. You know, I'm, I'm not going to get close to people who are emotionally, <laughs> emotional vampires. People try to shun them away. People who are braggadocious, people try to ignore them and not. We generally do the exact opposite of what people are looking for when it's offensive or uncomfortable for us. When that is the opposite of what we should do to stop the behavior, because if what they want is to be validated, validate her. And really, you don't know. She might be so desperate for that validation. You might be really a miracle worker for her. I mean, you never know who you are going to create a turning point for when you put your ego aside and say, all right, you're super annoying. Cause that's just a fact. You're super annoying. If you are constantly talking about how great you are, how much better you are than me, how much you have, like you said, you're in your lane and don't feel uh, obviously like you're not qualified. She does. So boost her up a little bit, give her what she's looking for and let me know what happens because I bet <coughs> that you will find it to be a turning point for you. Because when, when we just choose kindness and just choose to put our own ego aside and to be effective and say, all right, what is it that you evidently need? I'm gonna give that to you because I have enough. I have enough of every, I have enough of that. I have enough validation. I don't go around doing that because people in my life have loved me and validated me. And that's really what it comes down to. Evidently she hasn't. So be that person for her, see what happens. <laughs> Randall Cox. How do you know what is a real personal attack? That's a good question, Randall. Let me think. How do we know what is a personal attack? Um, well, I think that's, I think that is th the reason that we do not really know, you know, if somebody is personally attacking me or if they are simply asking a question, maybe is that what you're saying? Like if I'm giving a conference and somebody is, and somebody says, what did you do to get where you are? And I think that they're saying, hey, what did you do? You know, to, to get, what, what, who, are, who do you think you are? But what they're really saying is, God, I wanna be just like you and please tell me how you got there so that I can follow that path. You know, if we're not sure if it's a personal attack or not, I think that's your question. Uh, that question is the reason why I mentioned earlier, I don't want to, nothing is personal. I mean, when it comes right down to it, I realize sometimes I am attacked personally in a business setting in which I need to respond because if I do not, it will not work well for me in the end. Well, I will, I'll be less likely to accomplish my goal. Then I would respond, but I would respond in a different way from how they did. But to determine whether it's a personal attack or not is very difficult. That's why I always want to assume that it is not. And that's really the, you know, the truth. Almost nothing is personal. Whatever you say to me has really nothing to do with me ever when it comes right down to the truth of it. So I'm going to assume that it's not personal, especially at work, because at work, if I can keep my mindset really clear as to nothing is personal here. If you are a customer, my boss, whatever, whoever you may be, you may appear to be attacking me right now, but what you are really doing is attacking the system, the procedure, the business. I mean, how could it be possible for you to attack me? I'm not here for me. I'm here for work. So if you are, and I don't talk about personal issues, this is not, that's what I was saying at the beginning as well. It's not personal. So all of that said, if somebody is actually deliberately personally attacking me, the best way to do it again is not to engage in that battle, but to illuminate that battlefield, change the substance of what's going on there, you know, change the, the foundation, figure out what's really going on and narrate it. If you're in, if you are, I'm saying this is on the spot. You need to say something, narrate the situation. As I mentioned before, John, are you saying blah, 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 so that I feel this way or so that you can do this? If I need to address an overwhelming, if an overriding issue of somebody personal attack, personally attacking me, let's say my boss, and they tend to do it when they are called on something that they have not yet accomplished. And so they look to me and say, do you think you can maybe start getting your work done on time so that this doesn't happen again in front of our clients? You know, and, I, and I'm like, Ugh. You know, it was you who, who really did it. That's my boss. And so I would, you know, I would, that's maybe what I'm getting paid for, they think. 
So there's, you know, there's so many different, there's so many different dimensions to that, but you never know if something's personal. I try to always assume it's not. Okay. Always assume it's not. And if it is, then you need a script generally to address that type of situation. But first start out. Remember seven, the habit number five of the seven habits of highly effective people. I think it's number five. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Somebody who's in the know uh, is seek first to understand. And so if I want to be effective at solving these issues that come up in my life, it's always going to be whatever my ego is saying, whatever your ego says, if they're coming from ego, two egos will get nowhere talking to one another. I mean, that is a recipe for disaster. The only chance we have of moving up a level in our unlearning process is really to speak from my substance to your substance. And it's, in, it's very rare that we can do that in the moment. So I want to really try to understand who you are. That's going to be step number one, understand what's really going on here, because it's chances are not what it appears to be at first, especially if our ego is getting involved. Allison Burlock Boer Borland, I work at home as a child care provider. <laughs> I have a drinking problem. Is there a way to rude or inconsiderate parents at pickup and drop off times? Things like asking for favors or just always offering unwanted advice. Well, <laughs> again, Asking for little favors. I know what you're talking about, I think. Like when people are saying, oh, could, could you do me a favor? I threw a this and that. Could you give her her medication? You know what I mean? And you're like, oh, wait a minute. I can't cross that line. I'm not comfortable with that. Or, you know, I, we're going to be a few minutes late tonight. <laughs> so they're asking you to donate a little of your time, things like that. I think that in our work, that's what I was saying a moment ago, how really it's not personal. It's a procedure. It's a policy. It's a, it's, it's, it's not, it's not about you. You know, they're, they're being rude or inconsiderate to the daycare provider because that's who you happen to be at this moment. You're receiving that. But to stop that type of behavior, the, the best way is to set up policies and procedures that are clear so that those types of things won't happen to begin with. Now I'm talking about when they're asking you to do things and they're being inconsiderate. Rude behavior, generally, especially with parents who are dropping their kids off, they're going to be rude, you know, and you know that as part of as part of the job. There's going to be so many times where they're dropping kids off or picking them up where everybody's stressed because they're going someplace, you're right in the middle of a schedule that somebody's, you know, late uh, going someplace every day because they're like me and can't ever figure out how to get a few minutes ahead. Uh, so if they're rude and inconsiderate, number one, do not take that personally. And number two, if they're being inconsiderate is specifically that's where you want to have very clear procedures i'd be happy to get i'd be happy to call up the healthcare provider that would deliver that medicine would you like me to do that for you and then just add that to your tab and don't feel bad about it because it's right there on the wall you know saying how much i'm going to charge for each one of these things you can come anytime you want to drop your kids off an extra you want to pick them up 15 minutes late that's no problem at all uh as you can see on our wall that'll be an extra 15 bucks or extra 20 bucks should I be adding that to your account or would you like me to charge you in advance? And just be very upfront and open, like separate yourself from the business. You know, you are working at McDonald's. It is not your, it is not at your discretion to, if somebody says, oh gosh, I'm extra hungry today. Could you throw in an extra Big Mac? And they come in every single day and they buy the same meal, but today they want an extra Big Mac. You can't say, yeah, sure. That's not in your discretion. You know, you're not able to do that. That's how our business should be, where you just clearly, you know, let's say that you have a business partner, form one, you know, form your best friend, you know, my business partner, so that when I say, oh, unfortunately, I have to answer to my partners. And if you want to drop your kids off late, that's okay, but it's going to be 10 bucks. Would you like me to charge you for that now? Or would you rather pay when you come get them? Very upfront, happy to tell you, happy to receive it. Then it's not so inconsiderate they'll stop being so inconsiderate and you'll be like gosh i can take some more of this inconsideration when that's when i'm charging them for it and if they're rude just remember uh, if, if i'm when i'm in a service position it's very rare that i will respond to a rude comment because i and i'm not saying everybody needs to think this way i generally consider before i take a job whatever comes my way in terms of these customers i'm going to be learning from it and that's part of the job so I am there to serve them. And it's until they 
they have to really cross the line when I think, all right, now you cross the line. And then, then we will move along to some empowering statements or some bottom line statements or some redirects with assumptions, you know, things like you just said X, Y, Z, and I don't allow that type of language in my home, which is where we are today. So we can continue this conversation later on when you're ready to stop using that type of language. Would you like to do that? Or would you like to continue this right now? You, don't, you can always say those types of things to people, uh, but have them ready. Have your scripts ready. You know, those types of redirect with assumptions. When you're ready to, I'll be ready to. Or a bottom line statement, I don't allow this. Or an empowering statement, would you like to discuss this later on when you come back? Or do you think you're ready to discuss it now without using profanity? Those are bottom line statements. Or excuse me, those are empowering statements. Those, All those types of things are... The things you want to prepare in advance because when you are emotionally charged which you will be if somebody's insulting you you can't remember them unless you practice them a lot um but the last part of that question was you said how do i answer this how do i answer that and i can't remember the last part i apologize and joke time as efficient as he is has taken it away so there was a third part i believe and i apologize for not getting to it Rus khan how to deal with your manager sabotaging your work she says she is uh, like my mo hi mom is it mom did you write this <laughs> How to deal with your manager sabotaging your work. By the way, I can see that there are comments and joke time is sending them over or questions. I just am trying to get to them as quickly as I can and I can't see them. Uh, is that <laughs> How to deal with manager sabotaging your work. She says she's all for your idea, but she is not, she does not back you in the end. About four times it happened. Okay, let me get this straight, Roos. How to deal with your manager. So your manager is saying, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sounds like a great idea. Go work on that project. So you work on something and then when you are presenting it, let's say, or selling it now to the final stage, they're like, you know, during your presentation, they're like, <laughs> whatever. You know, they're, they're, they're not, you're unable to proceed with this and they're at fault or they're contributing to your unsuccessful bid. Um, that is gonna be one of those things where, again, I think, I think we, <laughs> we tend to project onto others. And I'm not saying you're doing this ruse con, but consider this. Here's how I tend to find the solution for things like this. And this just happened to me recently. Mom, we're not <laughs> joking. Where if I think my manager is Sheila, okay? And Sheila has been sabotaging me. She's done it now four times. And I think, how could you be so inconsiderate? You know, or how could you be sabotaging me like that? What you really need is to be, you know, grow a set of, you know, ovaries or testicles, whatever. You need to grow a pair. And, uh, or I need to think, you know, you need to be more honest. You need to, whatever the I need, you need to thoughts are that are going through your brain, Kuhn, I think it is, Rune. Start to ask yourself, how could it be possible that instead of Sheila, maybe that's what I need to be giving to this relationship. The reason I say that is because you tend to find solutions that way. If I'm thinking, you are so disrespectful. And if I can try and if, if there's no other option for me, but to then say to myself, well, if that's what I just thought that must mean, because it could only mean I need to be more respectful. What does that mean to me? What is what, what am I projecting onto them? The reason I say that is because we're all in our own world. And so I might say to myself, okay, maybe I, maybe I could be a little bit more respectful to Sheila and realize that maybe she's not sitting around 24 hours a day thinking about me and my projects and how she can sabotage them. And maybe she was trying to be uh, supportive at the beginning, even though it's four times. But then I was missing something along the way. And then when I presented it, she didn't even remember. And here I've been harboring this and putting these chains on her and not even telling her. So I've been probably sabotaging her. Sabotaging, that's the word that you used. I wonder if I've been sabotaging her recently, you know, not even maybe aware, not maybe even aware that I'm doing it, but I'm doing it to lash out at her because I haven't been respectful enough to her to tell her what I've been harboring about her and what I think of her behavior. You know what I mean? Even if it, you are 100% accurate with your assessment of the situation, if you were to flip it around and say, that being true, she's done this, she sabotaged me, how can I be respectful to her then? Because if what it, if, if what 
whatever it is that you believe that she needs to infuse into your relationship, the best way to teach is by demonstration anyway. So if I think you need to be more respectful, be more honest, be what I'm going to be respectful and tell you what I'm thinking. I'm going to be honest and I'm going to say it to your face and I'm going to say it right now so that I'm not harboring anything that would then make our relationship toxic or somehow, you know, it, it make it a can a, leave a cancer that would then grow. I'm saying all of this because that's a, that's a difficult one. She, your boss might really be sabotaging you, but the best way to, address that situation is to seek for us to understand, go up, have a script ready. That's the tip that I would give you specifically. When you have that talk, have your lead in line ready. You know, so you'd sit down with Sheila and you practice in advance a million times because what they, what will be likely to happen at that moment is you will sit down and it's uncomfortable or else you would have done it before the fourth time. And you probably, you know, start out talking about something else and you say, Sheila, I, I, I want to just talk about something with you. And when they sense that you're getting onto the topic, they'll be like, yeah, okay. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Blah, 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 could you get me this? Other? What was that, Dan? And they'll try to throw you off at the beginning because, you know, on a subconscious level, people who are passive aggressive communicators know just how to do that at the drop of a hat without any effort going into it because they want to throw you off your game a little bit. So practice your lead in line. That's my big tip. So that when you sit down, even if they do interrupt you and you were to say, Sheila, I'm frustrated lately and I need something. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, oh, okay. You ready? Sheila, I've been frustrated lately and I need some of you. Oh, oh, you did it again. You know, okay, okay. But no matter how many times they interrupt you, you have it ready so that you are going to get through your lead in line. You know, Sheila, lately I have been frustrated and I need some of your professional guidance. I need some of your leadership skills. I need some of your wisdom and then you know that i tend to say those types of lead-in lines for people even when they are in the wrong because i want to caress their ego a little bit yeah, I, I do i'm honest that's what, that's what i'm doing so then you use a script such as the ones we have talked about so far and uh i apologize it's time to go and yes oh no it's not time to go yet uh so then i would go through a script like the desk script and i say that because it makes it so much easier when we have a frame for our thoughts. These types of scripts, by the way, remember my upcoming course is, I don't have a link for it yet. So I'll, when I do, I will put it in the description below. But any course that I give, I try to give what are called freestyle scripts because what freestyle scripts do is they give you a frame for your thoughts so that you can get them out of your mouth more easily. And even if you need to write on a note card, the outline of your script. Now I don't mean the words you're gonna say because then you'll start to read them. And especially if you cry, if you're a crier, your eyes get watery and then you can't read it and it just keeps snowballs. So instead, you have a, a note card that tells you the structure of what you were going to say. You know, I'm going to use the, describe the behavior, explain the consequences, uh, say what I want, and then give a, a benefit statement at the end. You know, DESC, that might be what I would say. Your lead in line, your closing line. You might have those things written down on a quick po uh, po uh, index card maybe in front of you. Use a script and memorize your first line, memorize your last line, and that will infinitely improve whatever it is that you say when you address the situation. I would stick to just one time, you know, the, the last time they did this. Not, Joe, lately you've been sabotaging me, but Joe, in today's meeting, you laughed when I presented my idea, and earlier you supported me when I presented my idea. That confuses me and I don't know where I stand, no, not only with my idea, but with you. I need to figure out a way so that we can be on the same page and I can be clear as to where you stand with me and my ideas so that you and I can work together and be more productive. How can we do that, Joe? You know, if I were to be that clear with my communication, <laughs> I know a lot of people are going, oh, geez. If, if you just use a script, you can be that clear because you use one sentence per letter. You know, I'm thinking to my brain, in my brain, D-E-S-C. And that helps you clarify your message. Brevity is key and honesty. You know, so you just say it. That's the difficult part. It's not what to say. I can always find the word. Somebody tells me exactly, I need to send this message to this person. Can you help me? Sure, that's easy. The real difficult part is deciding, right? You know, deciding. 
deciding to be that honest with people is not easy. Deciding to be that authentic and vulnerable and say, hey, instead of doing what I've seen other people here do and try to you know, sabotage you, or instead of <laughs> you know, diminishing both myself and you by using sarcasm or making it a joke, to just sit down and say what I'm thinking about us and hope that you are at a level interpersonally that you can go through this with me. That's what takes guts, but do it. And the more you do it, the easier it gets, okay? Hi, Dan. I hope that answered your question, by the way. Hi, Dan. What if someone asks me about embarrassing aspects of my past or tells others, this has happened to me, how I can shut down, how can I shut down any remarks by refusing to respond or engage? Yeah, that just that, I'm trying to think, Julia, just so that I can, if there are some resources, I just did that. Embarrassing, when somebody brings up the past. Um, I, I, there's a video on YouTube on that subject that I just did recently. It comes down to what I had been saying actually throughout this video where I would say, John, you just had this lovely and talented. Uh, you know, to say something like, Joe can't, Joe Dan. <laughs> to say something like, John, I'm surprised that you would try to embarrass me in front of other people like this by bringing things up from my past. And then just give them a three second look, you know, or ask them, John, why would you try to embarrass me? Right? No, this is, ask me about, or asks you about embarrassing aspects of your life, or tells others. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. So they tell other people embarrassing things. You know, I think, picture this, okay? You are at, a, wow, I think they're, doing, they're redoing the room. No, 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 step in, step in. Picture this, you are at the cafeteria, okay? And you're sitting at the table and somebody, somebody at the other end of the table was like, Hey, you know, we were just talking about John here. He's getting married, but I told him to talk to you first because after that last experience you had with Coco Buffet, remember? And she turned out to be not Coco or Buffet. I said, maybe he should talk to you so that he could find out how bad it gets before he takes the lead, you know? And you're like, what? What? You know, or, hey, can you tell, you know, Trixie here needs a good divorce lawyer. Tammy, you must have one after that horrible divorce you just went through. God, I was telling them all about it. You know, and you're like, what? No. When things like that come up, okay, imagine that situation. You're in a you know cafeteria. One person says it across the table. Now, oh, by the way, all of the heads, as we know, either actually or feel like turn to you. You know, and you're like, I wasn't planning on talking about you know picking that wound right at this moment, but <laughs> use it as an opportunity to really get people on your side by again, being upfront, honest, and direct. You know, and saying something like, if you need a minute, always take a minute. Remember that it is your prerogative as a, because things like this we can't practice every day because hopefully we don't have people doing this in our life every day. But it is always your prerogative when somebody takes you off guard to stop for a minute. You know, if you're eating something, I'm actually going to take a drink anyway. John, why would you try to embarrass me in front of all of these people like that? You know that that was a really hurtful experience for me. And I don't want to talk about something like that ever, especially not here in front of a lot of people that I don't know. Why would you try and pick that scab of my sacred wound right now in front of all of these people? You know, so ask people. Again, I'm narrating the situation. If you need a moment to think about what the scene is so that you can narrate it, take a drink, take a breath, you know. If you were to do that, you know, if you were, while you're thinking, if you're just to go, while you're remembering, what am I gonna do here? And then you're, as you're doing that, gathering your thoughts and thinking, okay, what is he doing? Okay. And then just you just say it, John. That was a really embarrassing experience for me, and I'm surprised you'd bring it up here in front of all of these people and try to 
you know, pick that scab. I don't know why you would do that. And I don't need to know why. I'm just surprised. You know, if you just say that, or you could ask them, you know, why would you do that? I thought we were friends. You know, if you think you were friends. So but again, the trick now is, and I know a lot of people are thinking, oh, I can't really do that because I do that to my friends. Well, then don't be surprised when they do that to you. You know, but you could, you could say, you know, if, if, let's say that a friend did this, you know, I had, I had a friend, we do joke around. We do like to needle each other when we're in private. We make comments. I haven't been friends with them that long. So they didn't know that I don't do that in public, you know, that I'm a really private person in public and they were to do that. I would, you know, I would have that talk with them later on. You know I mean? I might say to them in front of everybody, I know we're friends, but that's going to a place I don't want to go to. You know, I wouldn't say that's going too far, you know, or that was really rude. If I know they're my friend and they were just, they just tested boundaries, you know, just like kids do. They want to, oh, that's too far. That's, that's the line. You know, tell, you might even tell them something like as you have to take your drink, you know. Hmm. That's the line. I, I'm not crossing into that territory. You know, whatever you feel comfortable saying, or if you think, like we mentioned before, this is a personal attack. If you were to, instead of going there, you know, and saying something like my marriage, you know, look who's talking <laughs> and you were to go there, all people who are watching this, you know, people, it's very rare that anybody who's engaging in unenlightened, loveless communication is going to be able to sway the opinion of anybody about you. That's very rare that people who are speaking from an you know a very loveless place are going to be able to make people think something about you. That only you can do by the way you answer it, right? So when people throw that at you, you know, when, when somebody's throwing a bunch of you know crap at you, it's because they have to have they have to have a lot of it first to throw. You know what I mean? They have, they have to be full of that to be able to keep chucking it all the time. So if you can demonstrate to other people what it really is like, not just to engage in positive communication or assertive communication, or, you know, not just to be witty or to always have the, but to be somebody who only speaks in loving terms. If you can do that, you can turn that situation around because anybody, you know, anybody who matters, it, it really, when I say matters, I don't mean in the, everybody matters and we're all wonderful people. But anybody who's going to matter in terms of your journey, anybody who matters, you know, when they're watching that exchange, if you do not engage with it, do not say, oh, yeah, I'm at that level too. But instead, just direct, honest communication and call people on their behavior. And you might want to let people know, you know, that that hurts us to think about. I don't know why you would ask that, but don't ask me questions like that again in front of these people. You know, don't ask me questions. Look, if you if you want to, if you have a question about that, as my friend, I would think that you would wait at least until you and I are in private, and then give them the three second look and move along. You know what I mean? Just narrate, narrate, narrate. Uh, by the way, there was something that came up. Oh, oh, I have to get your mindset straight. I have been working on a set of cards. Um, I don't know how to show you them or I would. One second. I'm going to see if I can show them to you. And I can't. So <laughs> there is, I have some uh, affirmations. And I'm going to put some of them in the, if you're watching this, I'm going to put some in the description below so that I can get your feedback on them. Because what they are are daily principles and affirmations so that when situations like this, when, <laughs> when situations like this come up, I can first remember who I am, and then my words are more likely to reflect that. What happens when we get into these little spats at work is we forget who we are, and that's that's common. We become drugged. Our brain sends us drugs to help us deal with the situation in the most efficient way, either by running away from it or by fighting, you know, beating the person up, <laughs> whatever works. But that's what the drugs are there for in our brain, and so we can't help but 
be flooded with drugs, which then causes us to be flooded with emotions, which then causes us to forget who we are and believe that we are someone else. Then we say silly things, and then later on we say, oh, I don't know how I could have done that. But don't worry, because you'll get a chance to choose again until you choose correctly. And the challenge really is not so much knowing the right words, which are great, that's what I do, but first you have to remember who you are, and that's part of the process. And so I try to make these cards, I do them for me, but now I'm gonna be sharing them with other people that help me remember who I am so that my words form follows function naturally. And so if, if form follows substance and function, but form follows substance. You know, form takes shape naturally and easily when the substance matches the form. So if I'm clear as to who I am, the words will be more likely to reflect that. And so I put together principles and affirmations, such as on this topic, I just pulled up the, one of them and it sounds like it's a good match. They, you know, they, they're kind of, it's, they're miraculous because when you need them, <laughs> whatever card you pick will be the right one. So the card I just picked was that the principle is we are made of love and it is our natural state to be loving. And when we speak words that come from lovelessness, it is a form of self perversion because that's not what I'm meant to be or who I, that's not who I am. So I have to then affirm the affirmation for that would be, I speak only words that come from love. And if I remember I, in my natural state am made of love, I am loving and I receive love and I give it and receive it freely and don't think a thing about it because that's what I am. That's what's in me and not of me. That's what I'm made of. I am made in the image of love and that's, that's natural for me. So when I am engaging in the illusion or coming from lovelessness, that's not natural. That is a perversion of who I am and what I'm here to do. And that's, I, I will not be about my father's business as long as I'm doing that. So I want to affirm then in the mirror, oh, my dad was such a good one for affirmations and <laughs> little post-it notes. All of, I have a bag of them. I'm gonna bring them out in our next time. Uh, I have to affirm to myself because the message is, we are affected by our message. I'm not, I'm not an affirmation like, people like me. I'm not, I'm not a, uh, I'm very specific in my affirmations. And the reason is because I know it to be true. And it's true on you know, a scientific level, it's true on a spiritual level, a metaphysical level, a physical level. We are impacted by the messaging that we are sent. When we are in high school, think about the track that played in your head before high school, and then after high school, did it change? Probably because we were all of a sudden exposed to all sorts of people and all sorts of new messages that sunk into our head and we had to sort them out. We are impacted by messaging and we forget sometimes that we send messages to ourselves at a very real level. I'm sending messages to people around me. I'm sending messages to people I don't know, to people that I know I'm sending them. I'm sending messages all the time, assuming and hoping that they have an impact wherever they land then I would also have an impact with the messages that I'm sending myself. And so to counter some of the things that are freaky things that I think that I, I know when my sane moments are not true and I, you know, I want to counter those, I want to deliberately send myself messages, just like I call up my mom and say, deliberately, I love you. <laughs> my mom and I are coming out with a podcast, by the way, because I think she needs it. It will help her stop pranking me and, you know, all the time. But I need to send myself messages, number one, to tell myself I matter too. Because if I think to myself, yeah, I matter, I matter, I matter, but I don't actually act like I matter, just like anyone else in the world. You know, hey, talk is cheap. You know, lip server, not even talk, thought is cheap. I want to tell myself, deliver messages to myself on a consistent basis so that that takes up some of the space of the messages in my brain that maybe I didn't choose to be there and I don't want to be there, but are there because, you know, we, we have a rice bowl in our head. <laughs> That's how I think about it. And you gotta, I mean, I don't know which religion it is. You gotta clear out the rice bowl to put new rice in. Sometimes you gotta stuff some extra rice in there and it gets some of that old rice out. But I speak only words that come from love. It takes that concept that we are only made from love and anything else is a perversion and puts it into words. I speak only words of love. I speak only words of love. And then when I'm writing to work in the morning or if I'm you know, exercising or if I'm uh, taking a walk or going to the grocery store, if I have that card in my pocket and I can pull it out throughout the day or I have it as a visual cue in front of me on my desk. I have it as a visual cue right now. 
I speak only words that come from love. The more often that I say that to myself, that I out loud say that so that it really sinks in there, those moments, those slivers in time, you know, when you have just a moment, like, and this is, this is still to Julia. Uh, yeah, Julia. Oh, thank you. <laughs> when I'm, when you're in that situation, Julia, and you're about to respond to somebody who was treating you with total lovelessness, that might be unfortunately where they are right now, you know, trying to embarrass you or whatever. That's not who you are. You are made of love and it would be a perversion for you to act, act like that. So instead remind yourself up before that point, I speak only words that come from love. That's who I am. And it will be more likely to happen then in the moment because you'll have told yourself that. So those types of affirm affirmations and principles are really important to me. And I'm going to be sharing them with you. Uh, I don't know when, but anyone who's interested, please let me know in the, uh, let me know in a question and I will put the link in the description as soon as I have it ready for you. And also make sure I'm going to put a link for the new course we have coming up. You're going to love it. You're, if you are a professional who needs to feel more confident or if you're on this spectrum someplace and you need the skills so that you can feel more confident that what you're saying is the right thing to say, you're following the rules, so to speak, step one, step two, step three, I got you covered. So check out that course if you have a staff filled with negaholics or people who you'd like to improve or maybe build on their collaboration skills and their positive communication skills. Sign in for that. I'll put a link in there. Joke time. I'm signing off. For everyone here at Dan O'Connor Training, Maggie and Buddy, they always fall asleep during these, these days. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Thank you all for your comments. I will try to answer them again in our upcoming live episode next Wednesday. I know I'm, I'm looking at no one that you can see, but remember to please speak loving words to one another. There's nothing that you have to say that you can't say in a loving way. That sometimes takes a funny form, but you can do it and I can help. So if you have any questions, let me know. This is Dan O'Connor signing off. Well, I thought I was signing off. I, I don't know how. <laughs>